By buying a secondhand motorcycle, you can save yourself a ton of money and get a great buy. I know a lot of people are very hesitant to buy a secondhand motorcycle and I get it, it can be quite daunting. Hell, some people I know will only buy new bikes as a result. Over the years, I've bought a lot of secondhand motorcycles, made mistakes along the way, and learned a lot. So I'm gonna pass those tips and tricks on to you so you can avoid getting scammed and in the process, get yourself a great bike for a good price. All right, let's get stuck in. The most common way to find a motorcycle now is by searching online. Sure, you can head down to your local bike shop still, but the most common places to find bikes are on Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, Cycle Trader, Craigslist, and bike sales. Now, I find the most reliable are Cycle Trader and bike sales because you have to pay for them to sell, but you can get a better buy from Facebook, Gumtree, or Craigslist with caveats that we will get into. You can learn a lot about a bike by the ad wording. If it says something along the lines of <laughs> goes hard, sick bike, or fast as f with no mention of servicing or how the bike actually is, go to the next bike. Once you find a bike you're interested in and they don't sound like a complete lunatic, initiate a conversation with them. The first thing I recommend asking is, what can you tell me about the bike's service history? If you get something along the lines of, I don't know, I've only had it for six months, or I just bought it from the last owner and he didn't tell me, move on to the next motorcycle. There's plenty of bikes out there with known service history. A good owner should be able to tell you when and what servicing was done, even if it was done by a shop. Now, a word of warning for Facebook, it's a jungle out there, people. Prepare for people to simply not reply, ghost you, or sell bikes without warning. You also need to be extremely wary of scams. If a bike is too good to be true, it probably is. If someone asks you for a deposit, do not put one down. This is a very common scam that's going on at the moment. They steal pictures from another motorcycle, then they get a ton of deposits, then they disappear. Only put a deposit down when you're in person looking at the bike. You can ask as many questions as you want, but you need to look at the motorcycle. I find it's good to take a friend along with you. Another set of eyes always helps, and it's good to have someone who isn't excited about buying a motorcycle there looking. And before you look, ask them not to start or warm the bike up before you get there. So you've arrived at the person's place, it's time to look at the bike. I find this is a really good chance to ask some more questions as people are a bit more forthright in person. They can also be a little bit more dodgy too. Look at the general condition of the motorcycle. Check for nicks and scratches or bent bits here and there. See if there's much dirt and grime and oil around. You gotta remember this, they probably washed the bike before you arrived and this is the best the bike is going to be presented. If it's pretty rough, it's probably even worse usually when you're not around. I find it's really important to check wheel bearings and simple to do. Just grab the rear and front wheels and move them from side to side. If there's any movement, it's time to replace them. While you're down there, check the brake pads and brake discs, both front and rear. Uh, brake pads, there should be plenty of meat and there should be plenty of meat on the discs as well. Pads, they're pretty easy to replace, however, brake discs can get quite expensive. Check the chain and sprockets for wear. If the chain is excessively dirty and grimy, that is a warning sign. There shouldn't be any kinks in the chain and too much slack. Also, check for side to side movement on the chain. There shouldn't be too much. Check the sprockets for wear. They should not be rounded or have any sharp points. If there is, it's time for them to be replaced. Check the bike is straight or if anything is out of line. I find a good place to start is at the rear of the motorcycle and look down it. That gives you a good indication if the subframe is bent or even worse. 
check the fork seals to see if there's any oil leaking. You don't want any oil on the fork legs or even worse, down below. That could mean that it's gotten down into the brake pads too, and that means that they would need to be replaced as well. On top of that, it's worth sitting on the motorcycle, grabbing the front brake and pumping the forks up and down, and then checking if there's any oil after that, because some sneaky buggers wipe the oil away before you come to look. I find it's really important to check the air filter as well. Now on a lot of street bikes and some modern adventure bikes, it's quite difficult to check and it's not viable. So ask them, have you checked the air filter recently? And if you're not happy with the answer, ask them how to access the air filter. If they can't explain how to do that, yeah, that's a warning sign. On a bike like my V-Strom 800, for example, it's very easy to check the air filter. So make sure you do it and just check that it's not too dirty or dusty. Also, pop the air filter off and check the inside of the air box. Is it dirty? Is it dusty? If it is, that is a massive warning sign. If you're looking at a bike with a foam filter, if the filter is deteriorating and falling apart, that is a massive warning sign, guys, and I'd probably walk away right there and then. If you're looking at a bike that's water-cooled, check the radiator cap, just check it unscrews properly, check it seals properly, and while you're there, check the radiator fluid too. A lot of bikes have none in it, massive warning sign, or it looks old and dirty. One thing you should always check is the steering head bearings. It's really easy to do. Just get the bike and move it side to side. It should be smooth with no notches and no grinding. Check the tires, both front and rear for wear. Uh, also check the build date on the tires. It's really easy to find just on the side. And also check the tire to see if it's got any flat spots that indicates it's been used a lot on the highway. That means they would need to be replaced if it does. So you've looked at the bike, it's time to start it. Now remember I said, you want to start the bike from cold. If it's been warmed up, that could indicate there are some warning signs. If it's fuel injected, it should just fire up straight away. If it's carbureted, you want to be able to use the choke yourself, see if it stays out and starts fine on the choke. Start the bike and listen for any abnormal noises. You don't want any knocking. Once the bike has idled for a while, give it some gentle revs while listening to the bike. If you're happy, I find it best to sit on the bike now and check for bent handlebars, levers, or anything like that. It's test ride time and there's a fair few things we want to be looking out for. Let's we'll see if all the indicators and everything is working well, both front and rear. The dash, really important on modern bikes. Uh, and even older bikes, they just don't make dashes for certain motorcycles anymore. So make sure they're all working correctly. And if it's a modern bike like this, just make sure all your modes and everything are working right and all your switches. All right, we want to see if the bike snicks in the gear nicely. Yeah, very nicely. Then we want to see how the clutch engages. So we'll just take off gently to begin with. Yeah, clutch is working nicely. Then I just go through all the gears going slowly. Just to see how they all work. Yeah, that's nice. I think I go down a couple. Yeah, that's nice. Now, we just want to gently test the brakes. What we're looking out for is any pulsing through the lever. If there is, that means the disc could be warped or bent, which we definitely do not want. Right now, what I usually do is just nail it in second or third gear. What we're doing there is just seeing if it pulls throughout the whole rev range and then decelerating. Yeah, that's nice. Now we want to do it in the high gear just to see if the clutch slips. It's all nice. Now we want to do a hard brake. Just to see if the brakes are working nicely. Yeah, these are working good. Just get a feel for the bike. Flick it around, see how it feels. If it's done a lot of highway use, what it'll feel like is you'll tip in and then it'll go bleh, bleh, like it falls off a cliff. 
because they're flat and then they go v-shaped on either side you don't want that you want nice smooth tires see how they feel on your brakes you just want to see if it's got good feel through the lever if you got nice clean fluid and the brakes have been bled regularly you shouldn't have any issues there and you should have a nice firm feel at the lever and if you've got a bike with a quick shifter make sure it works this one's up and down yeah it's working nicely newer bikes electronics expensive guys make sure they're all working properly so when your test ride is done park it up walk around the bike just check for any leaks or anything untoward and also check your oil level you really want to check it once the bike is warmed up so make sure you bring it up the flat and just see how the oil level is whether it's on a dipstick or with a sight glass my advice here is if there's too many warning signs walk away unless the bike is really cheap and you're confident you can fix the problems yourself there's plenty more bikes out there. So the bike is in really good condition and you wanna buy it. You can safely knock off about $500 and that isn't too rude. If the bike is really well priced already or in fantastic condition, they might be firm in the price or only knock off a couple of hundred dollars. Where you can save more money is by doing your due diligence like I mentioned. If there's something wrong with the bike, bring it up. Say, mate, the steering head bearings are stuffed. That's gonna be a few hundred dollars to replace at least. Can you knock that off the price? And do that for other things on the motorcycle as well. If you're getting a street bike or an adventure bike, make sure you get a roadworthy certificate and make sure it's not from one of their dodgy mechanic mates either. All going to plan by buying a secondhand motorcycle, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money and get a great bike. Thanks for watching everyone. If you haven't, make sure you click that subscribe button. By doing so, you're supporting an independent motorcycle channel. Now my question for you is, is there something you do or that you look out for that I haven't mentioned when you're looking at a secondhand motorcycle? If there is, put it down in the comments below so we can all check it out. All right, thanks for watching and keep it on the back wheel. Catches.